great. OK, thank you. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity here and thank you for the nice introduction. So um, as you all know, I'm one of the new faces uh, at Mark Williams School of Biomedical Informatics. Um, and uh, so to give a, a, a little bit, my colleagues has have give wonderful uh, projects and collaborations and discussing uh, a lot of uh, uh, innovations uh, leveraging AI. Um, so I'm kind of uh, focusing a little bit on the translation part. Is that how do we translate all those wonderful research and uh, discovery and application into real world applications from biomedicine and healthcare informatics? Uh, that's the center focus and also the key concepts of learning healthcare system. Um, just a, a, a brief thing, so why we are here. Um, we are here as um, we are through what we call digital transformation in healthcare. We have all the data digitally available. Uh, with such a big data, it make possible for us to really achieve the mission laid out by uh, President Barack Obama for their high tech um, you know, meaningful use bill. Uh, this is the uh, first weekly address, January 24th. The end goal, no matter what kind of innovation we do, the end goal is to try to lower healthcare costs, cut medical errors, and improve care. Uh, as we are computerized all our data, digital, digitalize all the healthcare related data, our end goal is uh, aiming to achieve uh, this mission. And at the same time, uh, given such a data, we also hope those data can give us um, accelerate the process of medical product development and try to bring those innovations and advance to patients who need them fast and more efficient. So um, this is, uh, uh, you know, the the, the you know, how we get here. And those most major healthcare institutions, this is uh, really the, the mission in the digital era. We, we needed to really kind of put the engine into work where the IT, data science, informatics, a kind of engine to make this whole um, concepts working in the precision medicine side, we, medicine side, we needed to leverage in the data, try to improve the care. In the learning healthcare system, system side, we try to leverage the data to, um, you know, accelerate the um, data driven uh, healthcare delivery. At the last, with the digitalization across many different uh, sectors, and we have ability to, uh, uh, and, you know, get the concepts of digital health where we can do telemedicine, we can use wearable devices to monitor patients. And most importantly, we can leverage the AI technology to uh, uh, derive a cure faster. And uh, the foundation of this is still under the clinical transnational science. For any innovation we want to move to clinical practice, we still go through that evidence process. And from the learning health system, which I would emphasize, um, this is a come from the um, uh, University of Michigan, the learning health system, uh, the Chuck Friedman's um, um, vision, and this is also the vision through meaningful use and the uh, ONC uh, high tech pieces where we want to leverage the data, generate the knowledge, and then translate that knowledge into uh, healthcare practice. Then that healthcare practice generates new data for us to um, uh, get the learning to address the health problem of interest. And this is come from ChatGPT, how we envision the system in the future. Um, this is uh, more, we view the ChatGPT or large language model. Those are some big data knowledge repository for us to tap into. And this is the vision from the ChatGPT was envisioned. The future of the hospital setting will be the setting which integrates advanced technology continuous learning in healthcare. 
And then how do we get there? Um, this is, uh, you know, the previous slide to show the non healthcare system, but as you can see, it's a technology, it's a digital, it's data. And no matter what, um, when we bring that to clinical practice, we still go through what we call the uh, knowledge, um, you know, share understanding and from the knowledge consumer side, the application side. And this is the Biomedical Informatics Foundation where we do data information, knowledge, wisdom, where you know, at the end is a shared understanding. I think today here uh, with this workshop, we, we kind of see, you know, the, the modern healthcare delivery really needed to see how do we tap into that digital assets, those novel technology to bring, uh, you know, the, to achieve the mission um, of the high tech. Um, so to put everything together, um, this is what we generally um, as a, a researcher, as our center's focus, we call translation science. Um, the, the fundamental things is the, all the wonderful discovery, leveraging big data, leveraging deep learning, neural network, AI technology, need to really translate to an application, which is augmenting human intelligence. And the key point for how do we accelerate that process and how do we address the challenges faced in the healthcare leverage in the technology and this is uh, really require us um, foster in both ankle ones the methodology innovation second is the team science collaboration Um, so I will illustrate a little bit more on two different concepts. Um, one is the learning precision, precision medicine for pediatric asthma care management. This was done when I was at Mayo Clinic. Um, this specific project actually is a demonstration is that um, technology is not the end goal. The end goal is uh, how do we make the technology um, be touched, deployed into healthcare practice. So, as the, many of you know, pediatric asthma asthma is is from the epidemiology perspective, it's a common chronic disease with uh, impacting many pediatric uh, um, patients, and there are some uh, basic biology epidemiology be behind it. But in it, this is a huge issue is that we know children are underdiagnosed as the asthma and there are significant uh, healthcare burden associated with that and the, there's uh, issue with uh, patient uh, um, you know uh, outcome. And uh, so, you know, the the whole in in the to really understand this using the the clinical data, we also notice that um, pediatric asthma tend to be underdiagnosis and the ICD coding system does not work very well. So back in 2011, 2012, we tried to tap into the e electronic health records and using the natural language processing techniques to uh, computerize the, the two criteria for asthma diagnosis. And uh, one is the predetermined asthma criteria. Basically, we know ICD uh, codes are not, uh, you know, for pa pediatric patients that are under diagnosis. So how do we using the using the key um, variables to do the um, I, uh, you know diagnosis? Second, though, is popular used in the um, uh, immunology side for the asthma studies so is asthma predictive index. Uh, it's it, those are the two criteria, and we computerize that into using EHR data to be able to determine that automatically. Um, the beauty is not related to how do we develop an LP algorithm for pediatric asthma. We know that you know. You know, back then, um, this was not hot uh, in 2011, 2012. And, um, you know, how do we tap into the AI NLP technology for clinical research back then was not hot. But, uh, 
you know, I, I thank my collaborator, um, you know, for trust. We can actually leveraging technology to facilitating the discovery uh, in a clinical uh, side. And this we have about uh, 20 publications. We have about four different NIH grants on this topic from 2012 to 2023. It is a decade long journey uh, where the translating the technology for real world applications. And um, we're not just a stop there. And uh, there is the ongoing clinical trial uh, regarding this uh, at Mayo Clinic right now. Um, basically, how do we leverage this, um, you know, algorithm we developed and uh, translated and uh, to real world application in the clinical system to enhance asthma care. Um, and uh, so those are the um, pieces we um, developed this called precision asthma care through asthma guidance prediction system. Um, so this is, um, you know, currently ongoing, um, uh, you know, the system has been de uh, deployed uh, and uh, the research is ongoing and the implementation right now is uh, uh, on EPIC with uh, Firebase uh, EHR integration. And uh, so the, that's the one, one cases. And actually that was that the previous one is uh, the, 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 the one which claimed to be vi very su successful AI deployment at the Mayo Clinic. Um, the second one I want to do, which is not yet achieved in the clinical practice, but uh, the the goal is to still want to bring that into clinical practice. And but we during the process we noticed something we really needed to research on. Um, this is about EHR based event surveillance and the risk prediction in surgery. Uh, specifically, it is also a decade long journey. Uh, in 2013, um, back then I was engaged into a, a quality improvement project where they want uh, to um, do coding correctly for patients with uh, surgical complications. And we transform that project into a prediction task and do event surveillance. So, um, you know, at the end of, end of the thing, we don't want people to have that surgical complication. Getting binning is not the end goal. And getting the patients um, assess the risk uh, of um, post-surgical complication is, is the goal. So the hypothesis we have is that the rapid adoption of EHRs and the cellular advance of HIT makes the near real-time post-surgical com um, complication surveillance possible in the practice. And um, fortunately, uh, you know, when, whenever we talk about using AI, machine learning, supervised learning, uh, training data always been an issue. But for surgery, we are fortunate to have this National Surgical Quality Improvement Program, which got a lot of data points for training system. So we're actually using such a data, which is NISQIP data, to help uh, link with the local EHR data to really develop a, a system. And uh, this is, uh, you know, the the project has been running for three, four years. We started to to get more understanding about, um, you know, the um, how to leverage EHR for surgical surveillance, how to detect the cases, and how do we do risk prediction. Um, don't want to burn you for details, but uh, most of those things which is ending up is that features um, in the clinical analysis are critical because some of the uh, you know risk factors are documented they are not available in the clinical uh, structured the EHR data. And uh, so we also um, right now um, building more confidence that uh, in 2022, 2023, the most recent publications will show that the clinical data can be used to build models for real time individual risk assessment. Uh, we, we, we firmly believe um, we are from the technology discovery side, we are there, but how do we get that into clinical practice um, is the, you know, there are a lot of things we need really need to consider. 
Um, and also during that process, we also discovered um, there are certain situations we may not go to leveraging the deep machine learning technology where the alternative learning strategy may still be fruitful. Uh, this is uh, the, the consideration people need to consider first the patient volume. In the case of uh, you know rare uh, situation, basically post such for complications as well as some other conditions where the physician, the practice need a machine to assist. They may not have enough patient volume to turn a liable system, patient variability, data sparseness, and the computational cost model interoperability and the model implementability. Uh, those are the consideration we, we think when you really want to build application for the uh, clinical practice. Um, and uh, during the COVID-19, uh, we also noticed that even with all those AI advancements, we tend to not really have the data foundation for us to apply those technology. And that data foundation come to the real world situation we are facing. We, we, we know the real world is faced what we call structural bias and the patterns of health inequality discrimination come and the imperfect healthcare system, uh, the lack of interoperability, interoperability and the lack of data sharing also causes a significant issue. So there, there are significant uh, um, concerns uh, regarding this. And uh, but we believe the technology is there. Uh, how do we, you know, get into the real world application? Require us to do the teamwork. And uh, so those are the things uh, we are firmly believe. Uh, we, as the research team, uh, aim to try to research those translational gap and try to, um, you know, using human-centric AI approach to, to, to do that. We're not trying to find, you know, healthcare problems to solve. We want the healthcare sectors to bring questions to the uh, team to, to answer. Uh, we know the digital divide is real and um, the data not presenting your big data those are the things we don't really um, represent in our model. Uh, data fragmentation is real, lack of interoperability causing patients with you know, you know, um, you know, social disadvantage groups. They may not have data in your system. How can you deploy system uh, where they need input from that patient? Um, from the clinical practice point of view, black box we currently consider not acceptable. And we also notice um, there's uh, you know lack of scientific rigor is, is uh, a no-no in clinical practice. And uh, so the, the goal for our center mainly is that how do we bring AI technology into healthcare practice? We want to tap into um, those three different pieces, one is evidence-based. So any technology we need to bring to the practice, we need to build evidence that actually can improve healthcare. And we need the people-centric technology. It's not about replace somebody's job, but it's more about augmenting. And most importantly, we need to show we bring value to the healthcare sectors.